In 2009, the Empress Theatre Society of Fort McLeod, Alberta, launched a new piece of classical music during its annual Windy Mountain Music Festival. The creative collaboration which saw this new piece of music into being celebrates the life and times of Jerry Potts, a local historical figure. The story is introduced by Gerard Gibbs, the executive director of the Empress Theater. So this piece that we commissioned for the festival, the, the Windy Mountain Music Festival here at the Empress Theater, uh, was uh, written by Alan Bell, an Alberta composer, and also a uh, faculty at the University of Calgary, um, and uh, very well known in the Canadian music scene. Um, and uh, since the, the, the piece, as, as Rivka Galani, our music director, uh, uh, originally thought of this, uh, was a piece for solo viola, spoken voice, and string ensemble. So we would need a text. So Alan actually suggested Fred Stenson, very well-known author of fiction, mainly historical novels. And uh, they had somewhat of a work working relationship prior to this. So, and, and Fred is very familiar with uh, that era of, of Alberta history, uh, did some further research, uh, spoke with authorities, and um, uh, gave it gave it a great deal of thought and then created this text and then it That was the first step and then Alan Bell began to work on the music. Uh, Alan was approached and uh, I was so happy to know that he's interested and the idea of text also was I have to say m my idea uh, uh, and and the connection with the local people uh, and the First Nation people was a kind of idea that was developed between us. And Alan contacted uh, Fritz Stenson, uh, the writer, um, and then the ball was rolling. The idea for the piece um, began the third year of the festival. It's by that time that uh, Rivka Galani, our, our music director, and I discussed the idea of commissioning new works. And uh, she believed very strongly that um, the, uh, the first new work should be something based on our place here, here, here in Fort McLeod at the Empress Theater. And uh, it, was, it was a very easy choice from my perspective, uh, knowing a little bit about the history here, having been here only seven years. Um, Jerry Potts was a good choice. I mean, he's a person that uh, represents a lot of things. I think the duality of, uh, of um, you know, the new world, the old world, this, and this sort of interesting mixture of people that, that have, uh, um, have arisen from the new world here. Uh, and of course, since he's Métis, he also represents the, the meeting of the, uh, the Western world with uh, the native world. Jerry Potts was a man of the frontier. Uh, born somewhere along the Missouri River, I believe it was, in what is now Montana. Uh, his father was a, a Scot who had been, had lived in Pennsylvania and then joined the American Fur Company and uh, came to the upper Missouri in about 1837-38. Immediately took a blood woman as his wife and they had a, the son, uh, Jerry Potts, in 1840. So uh, right from the beginning, uh, he was more or less between two worlds, of course, with his mother being native and his, uh, his father white. He was an excellent shot, good hunter, uh, liked to drink, um, traveled quite a bit, liked to drink, um, worked for the traders, and liked to drink, and uh, you know, he had a very kind of a rounded career, shall we say. Well, I have to assume that if if Jerry Potts were somehow able to respond to the fact that there's now a chamber work and with a spoken word portion in it about him, a poem, I, I think he would laugh. I mean, I think he would laugh hard because um, it wouldn't be anything that his life would have set him up to expect. You know, I think he had, a, he had a pretty hard life. I heard the piece for the first time along with everyone else at the at the premiere in Fort McLeod. 
and I was very moved by it, you know. It wasn't the kind of music, uh, I didn't know what to expect musically. I, I, I didn't have any sort of uh, preview of the music uh, at all. And, uh, and I, was, I was kind of delightfully shocked by how, how different it was, you know, from, from anything I'd heard before. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's so wonderfully unsentimental. And, uh, and harsh at times, and I thought, that's, that's perfect. You see, the piece is very exciting. It is based on a story, a very moving story, of a hero. It's a piece that is sort of a strange hybrid of, of um, in that it, it is a piece for the solo viola, in a sense like a concerto. Uh, there's uh, also the text and the narration. And so the, the reader, in a sense, is the second soloist. It's like a double concerto, um, except that one has to deal with the text, which has a dramatic role. So what I wanted to do was create the same or a matching or a commentary kind of drama for the violist. Not that she was necessarily playing the role of Potts, so to speak, but that she had a dramatic interplay with what was taking place in the text. Move up. Stand off. Slide out. The whiskey forts were many. And because one is writing a concerto of that kind, there has to be an aspect of virtuosity that you draw upon. And in order to write a piece that's virtuosic, you have to have a relationship with the player. So I did have a session with, with, um, with Rivka, where she showed me her viola, which is a particularly wonderful instrument and remarkable and, and perhaps unique. Um, and some of the things that, of course, because of that, she's capable of doing. Of course, she's also a remarkable player, without question. So there was uh, that session of learning. And, and, and then I took that away and just began to chew on it. And I had all those things to balance, the, the player, the instrument, the text, and then trying to make the whole piece work. When you have trust in an artist, if it's a writer or a composer, a player, there's no way that, I mean, the trust is backed by knowledge who these people are and what their abilities are. I think you cannot go wrong. <laughs> In February 2010, in cooperation with Trinity College of Music in London, England, Bear Child was performed for a third time at Blackheath Halls. This presentation was the culmination of the continued collaboration initiated by Gerard Gibbs of the Empress Theatre and Rivka Golani of Trinity College, London. You were quicker than I gave before. We need to, we need to rehearse that. So then at 13, things all over the place. Oh, yeah. Right from the start, uh, Rivka and I did discuss the idea of continuing the life of the, the works that we commissioned for the festival, uh, which is why uh, when we discussed the, the idea, the concept of the Jerry Potts piece, it would involve someone or several people like from uh, f uh, within her circle in London, and uh, we were we were she she knew that we were going to get an excellent piece from Alan Bell, 
and uh, once we performed it, we knew that this, is, this was a piece that certainly deserved a life beyond the festival. Uh, so to see it performed in a place like London uh, is, is really very special. I'm sure we're going to see this piece performed in other venues and other places. Uh, the most satisfying thing for me personally was to see the tremendous turnout and the tremendous response to the piece and the concert uh, and to see all the various people with whom we, we established uh, a relationship uh, in the process of organizing the concert, to see them there and to see their reaction and their warm response to, to the Bear Child piece was, was uh, very gratifying for me in particular. It was, it was a wonderful experience to see the culmination of all the work and all the effort from all the parties, from the festival, the Empress Theatre Society, Rivka, all the students and faculty at Trinity College to come together to make this concert happen. But it's also uh, wonderful to know that as a result of these relationships that we build to make this concert happen, we've opened doors for other possibilities. We're looking forward to doing additional work with Trinity College, uh, with other organizations in London. We're looking to build partnerships in Budapest. Uh, this relationship that we've built with Rivka has opened doors all around the world, and uh, the possibilities are just tremendous. children's children stand here still and that is the meaning of my long ago life for this I am grateful and give thanks